stream, keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Graven here with another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash vids. And if not, that's fine too. Ain't no worries. Uh, I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. We got good questions as we always do. So let's do it. JC Jackson to Baltimore. First question came from my guy Aiden Morse. He said, Hey, Engraven, I was watching a video put out by the Baltimore Ravens News and Rumors YouTube channel. And they brought up the idea of acquiring JC Jackson. However, they did bring that they did bring up that it'd be an expensive signing and we would have to trade or cut Marcus Peters. What are your thoughts on this? Oh man, JC Jackson. That dude is a turnover machine. That dude is always getting like 50,000 picks in a season. Um, and, and he's been doing it. He's been doing that for a while. Uh, and he, he's one of those players that really don't get talked about enough. Um, but with, with Marcus Peters, yeah, like, because th that would be a lot of money to go around to all that cornerbacks. You know, Marlon Humphrey ain't going nowhere. Uh, but to, for them to get rid of Marcus Peters to bring in a J.C. Jackson, oh, boy. I don't know, man. Marcus Peters, he coming off the what the ACL Achilles surgery, um, and J.C. Jackson coming off another year, him getting all them picks. Uh, but like, if it, it would all just depend on the money, and, and I almost feel like it would be, I don't know what Marcus Peters' dead money would be, but I almost feel like if you gotta cut Marcus Peters in order to bring J.C. Jackson on, because he's gonna get some money. He gonna get some money. He got tendered last year. I think it was a second round tender, and I'm like, man, for nobody to offer the Patriots a second round tender for him? Are you crazy? Like nobody, nobody. A second round? It wasn't even a first. It was a second round tender. But anyway, um, I almost feel like it, it may be just too because you already got a ball hawk corner in Marcus Peters, and, and he was well, he was missed so bad last year. And see, with Marcus Peters, his value is not even just with. Getting a bunch of interceptions. It's not even just that, but it's his leadership. It's his fire. Uh, it's his energy. Um, it's him as a defensive coordinator, too, because y'all know about that part. Um, so it, it's a lot more than that. Could J.C. Jackson bring all of that? Well, he could bring the picks. You already know that. Like, that dude, he find a way to pick off so many passes. Why can't we just have all three? Next question came from Norma. She said, why isn't Priest Holmes in the Hall of Fame? I watch Kansas City games, and no one mentions this man, but I wonder what Tyreek Hill thinks. Um, I'm not sure. Talking about Priest Holmes, that old Baltimore Raven. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't know where he stands as far as the record books and rushing yards. I know he used to score a lot of touchdowns, and he he used to be like that. Um, but I'm I'm not sure exactly what his status is. Next question came from my guy Joshua. He said, "Ain't Raven a lot of future plans for the Ravens hinge on Lamar Jackson's deal." Uh, so let's get this thing done. For the people who think Lamar doesn't deserve a deal, making him one of the highest paid QBs. Here's my argument. Uh, the Ravens gave up two second round picks and a fourth round pick swap to the Eagles for a future franchise unanimous MVP superstar quarterback. If you consider what it takes to land a possible franchise quarterback, teams are willing to give up a king's ransom. If we were able to somehow measure the value of money saved and assets, we were able to keep an Ozzy and EDC steal of a trade for Lamar. I guarantee the value would be astonishing. Not only has his performance warranted a top end deal, just look at what he's done for the team. He has taken the Ravens from a boring annual playoff contender to being Lamar Jackson's Baltimore Ravens. He gained the Ravens national attention. That's true. And we know for a fact that he alone has sent Ravens revenue through the roof. Oh, yeah. Good for business, too. Um, he has his weaknesses, but so does everyone else. I'd rather watch a player give every ounce of effort and talent he has and throw his body on the line every play. Uh, then have a guy who can only stand back and throw passes but gains 4,000 yards a year and leads in touchdown passes. Uh, Lamar Jackson is, is, is the Ravens. Pay that man so we can continue building our roster around the man, the myth, and the legend, Lamar Jackson. We need to appreciate the greatness we are seeing while we have it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Lamar certainly deserves to get paid. And um, his, his, stock, his stock went up despite him being hurt. Uh, that actually made his stock go up even more because it just showed that he he is the Ravens and everything that was so crazy and wonderful about the Ravens before Lamar went down. It was everything that stressed us out and drove us crazy uh, about the Ravens after Lamar went out. You saw in these close games, these one score games, these one point two point games um, where Lamar was in, they won ninety nine percent of them. 
But then you saw these close games, these crazy games, these one point, two point games. When Lamar was out, they ain't win none of them. Well, except the Bears game. But it's like th- this guy, he just means so much to the team, and it's, it's clear as day. Uh, they do need to pay him. Um, the longer that this thing goes on, the more risk it has for getting ugly. And you don't want it to get ugly. Not with your franchise quarterback. Not with Lamar Jackson. And we know, again, he's no perfect quarterback. He got his stuff he got to improve on for sure. The decision making, um, just the, 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 the consistency, uh, the holding on to the ball, um, the, the not seeing the field sometimes or need, needing to see it better sometimes. Um, he he got his stuff that he got to work on for sure. Sometimes he runs into sacks. Sometimes he um he he needs to learn how to play for the next down, live to see another down. Like it's a, th- throw that ball away. If, if if ain't nothing shaking, throw that ball away. It's okay. Um, so he got some stuff he got to work on. But it, the 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 thing about him is that he he's got his things that he's got to get better at. But even with him needing to get better at those things, the Ravens are still winning. So just imagine once he starts consistently getting better at all those things, it's going to be ugly for the league, not for the Ravens. Next question came from my guy Kingston. He said, hello, I hope you and the team are doing well. I'm starting to see a bad trend, a very bad trend in our season. If you remember the year the 49ers went 13-3 and and went to the Super Bowl, that was like the year where we went 14-2. and Actually, I believe it was the same year. And that was the peak season uh, for both teams under Lamar and Jimmy. But after that season, the 49ers got decimated with injuries and went 6-10. And, and then this year, uh, they were 10-7 and seven and barely made the playoffs thanks to a game-saving interception that game. I know they just beat the Cowboys, but really, do they have a realistic shot of winning it all? If, if they're in it, anybody got a shot. If you in the playoffs, and this is one of the reasons I wanted the Ravens to make the playoffs, and I know everybody was hurt, so it would have been... A slim chance, but a slim chance is better than no chance at all. Uh, so the fact that they are in the playoffs and the fact that they even got a playoff game under their belt that they won against the Cat. Oh, that game was so crazy. But yes, they do have a shot to win it all. Anyway, he said, now back to the Ravens. The Ravens were eight and nine with a decimated team. So my question is, how high do we set this team's standards going into next year? Because right now I'm setting it low because I just don't want to be disappointed. But we can always hope. Well, that that's fine if you uh if you set the standards low, but that I think that's um yeah, it's just up to you personally where you want to set the standard for the Ravens next season. Uh for me, it's it's about success, it's about making better decisions, uh it's about better game plan, it's about better execution, it's about uh hopefully being a healthy team. Um so the the standards for me are high. They're high and, and not high because um we as a, a, a Ravens fan base, excuse me, are spoiled. Um, but be just just because we know what Ravens know what success is, they've had success, and those those are the expectations with this team, and that's what they should be. The the Ravens Ravens fans they they should expect success because they are not some bottom barrel team. They are not some poorly run organization. They are not no sloppy franchise. No. The fans should expect success, and the Ravens should expect success. There should be success. You have so many players who can all come together as a team and be successful. You got a coaching staff that they know how to come together and be successful, and both sides got some stuff that they got to work on. But the the stuff, the, the all the ingredients are there. It's just a matter of put them to, putting them together the right way and making that thing happen. Next question came from my guy Trey Five. He said, What's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and your fam. And of course, team, keep it clean. Uh, my question is regarding the timing of Lamar's extension. You've often said that you foresee the Ravens not extending Lamar this offseason, but possibly later. Now, this will bring up my thoughts on Arizona's Carl- Ky- Arizona Cardinals' Kyler Murray. Ooh, that was a tongue twister right there. Uh, I know that he underperformed in his recent playoff game, but who knows when he will get extended. Uh, but my ultimate question is if Kyler signs an extension before Lamar, how do you think that affects Lamar's extension, especially regarding money for the the, the total deal and guaranteed money? Um, that's a really good question. Now, if if Kyler were to sign his extension before Lamar, um, whew, that would have a lot of people looking at the Ravens sideways, like, man, like y'all really let Kyler Murray, who came in after Lamar, y'all really let him get his deal 
before Lamar, like Ravens, y'all really ain't get that done? Like, really? And, but at the same time, uh, it would, I'm sure it would, it wouldn't be the highest pay. He wouldn't be the highest paid quarterback. I mean, it's a possibility he could be, but I just don't see them making him the highest paid quarterback. Um, but it would just help out Lamar that much more because Lamar uh, has had more success than Kyler Murray has with the Cardinals. Uh, and Lamar Jackson, like, Saying this is going to sound worse than what I what my intentions are, but Lamar Jackson means more to the Ravens than a Kyler Murray means to the Cardinals. Kyler Murray was out a couple of games. The Cardinals they found some ways to get some stuff done. Still, Lamar Jackson was out a couple of games. The Ravens ain't find no way to get stuff done for real. Um, but yeah, Lamar Jackson's value to Kyle Jackson. I'm, Kyle Jackson. Kyler Murray. Is obviously very valuable to the Cardinals for sure. There's no doubt in my mind about that, and I'm not saying that he isn't. Uh, but Lamar Jackson is just that much more valuable to the Ravens. So, um, if if Kyler were his if his deal was to get done before Lamar's, uh, it would look bad on the Ravens' part, but it would only help out uh, Lamar. And my guy Trey had another question about the offensive line. Uh, he said, "My second question is regarding the versatility of the offensive linemen." Oftentimes in the draft, our team emphasizes versatility in offensive linemen, but I personally have had enough of that. Our example is Bradley Bozeman, a center from Alabama, coming to the Ravens just to immediately be placed to guard. Yes, I love this question already. I see where it's going, or I, I think I see where it's going, but we'll see. Uh, yet at the end of the season, press conference, he says that he prefers center as it is, a, it is more natural to him. Why can't we just have some linemen who are great at just one certain position see we often talk about this when it comes to the uh, defensive players because you know in, in that scheme uh, the wink will have you doing 50 million different things and you'll be a jack of all trades but a master of none um so this is uh on the offense it applies too it, it would be nice and you know like injuries happen and shuffling happens and we get that but it would be nice to have yeah like a, a true center and let and let him play center a true tackle and let him play tackle. A true like guys that specialize in those areas. So I feel you one thousand million tenth percent. Uh, don't get me wrong. I understand the importance of versatile linemen, but the majority of the linemen on the team don't need to play almost all the different offensive line positions. Hey, I, I'm I'm with you all day on that one, man. Next question came from Nova. He said, I ain't graving this Nova again, but just one question this time. Uh, but it's a long one. Yes, I see. I'm looking at this email and I'm like, wow. Uh, hoping you, your fam, and the rest of the team keep it clean. I'm having a great day. With that, let me get into my question. All right, here we go. So, like you, I believe all the coaching staff will get a pass this year. So, Hobbs, Giro, and Wink will stay in place. So, instead of the fire coach talk, I wanted to know your thoughts on the Ravens making a game plan coordinator. Ooh, a new position. Okay, I like that. If you look at other teams in the league with high-powered offenses, Kansas City, Cincinnati, uh, and the LA Rams, who we all know all three of these teams up, up close and personal, especially this year, uh, they all have game changers, not just at quarterback, but at wide receiver, tight end, and running back, and have decent old lines. See, healthy, we have about a, well, the decent old line part. I don't know about that part. But healthy, we have game changes at all of those positions when healthy. But anyway, he said, I look at us and think we have the personnel to implement things they do. Okay, so I should have just kept reading what he was saying because we said the same thing. Uh, if you look at defenses in the same manner, New England, Indianapolis, the 49ers, they have a pass rush that gets to the quarterback. Linebackers who can make plays happen for turnovers and tackles for loss. And secondaries that can break up plays and implement schemes. I feel we have the personnel to do the same, albeit it depends on who stays and who goes. So my point is there isn't a, def a deficit necessarily that prevents us from playing at the elite level on both sides of the ball. So let me get into coaching. Uh, with the plethora of injuries this year, I think we saw some highs and some lows of coaching. Agreed. Uh, g -Row, we saw changes with the offense and using more people due to the lack of availability of our starters. And the offense was inconsistent but did enough to win games early. Uh, so I can see that he can make necessary adjustments but either is stuck in his ways or just reverts back to what he knows when things don't go right. Uh, we saw the same for Wink with the defense later in the season. Uh, less leaving our DBs on islands and all-out blitzes and more of disguising our flaws and less risky calls overall. Yes, 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 and more yes. And Harbs had the unnecessary aggression late in the year, but he still had this team competing every week, no matter who was put out there. 
Uh, so I can say that our coaches can coach, but when the starters are in place, they seem to want to coach too much and less of just letting them play their role and putting them in position to succeed. <sighs> Thank you for this email. This is great. Uh, which drives me to my point. I see where we can be at and see the coaches are staying. So maybe a game plan coordinator to help these coaches maximize our players and placing them in places to flourish. Someone who can get the ear out of our coordinators and advise them on what to focus on. Example could be running more screens to JK, or letting away be a pass rusher and not drop into coverage. Going for one instead of two and we don't need two. Using Mandrews as a decoy to open up coverage for others in the red zone. Not leaving our inexperienced DBs on islands when you want to blitz or just bringing in new concepts and ideas that otherwise look stale and predictable. It's a roundabout solution to a consistent problem that doesn't resort to a clean house outcome. Love to hear your thoughts, although I'm quite sure EDC wouldn't consider the idea, but one can dream. Sorry for the true novel I've written here. LOL. No, this was perfect. Wow. This was great. But a game plan coordinator to help. Look at what you described. Let me go back to it. Um, a game plan coordinator to help these coaches maximize our players and placing them in places to flourish. Someone who can get in the ear of our coordinators and advise them what to focus on. That's your head coach. That's your head coach's job. To get in the ear of the coordinators, and that's your head coach's job. I mean, the coordinators should be doing that themselves. But, you know, John Harbaugh, he's, he's, he's backed off. He, he doesn't micromanage them. He lets them do their own thing. He says, all right, Giro, you got it. All right, Wink, you got it. I got big trust. Shout out to Lamar Mark Ingram. But I got big trust for y'all. Go do your thing. I ain't going to interfere. I'm, I'm going to just stay back here, do my thing while y'all do yours. I'll give you the okay. You run, run stuff by me first, and I'll give you the okay. But, again, that's what you mentioned, game plan coordinator. That's Harbaugh's job. That's his job. So everybody needs to step up a lot because, again, like you mentioned, we have the personnel. We got it. It's there. It's really there when healthy, obviously. Our offensive line, that could – Use some improvement, but we got the personnel, especially on offense. On defense, we got some guys too, but it's, it's, it's there. So they, they got to figure this thing out, how to use it. And again, with them using a lot of guys the correct way, with them actually having their pass rushers be pass rushers, that would be a change in philosophy, the, the, the thing we've been just preaching about on here recently. Next question came from my boy John. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and the family. The Steelers game just ended and I am fuming out at the coaching staff. And I hope all the people saying Trey Lamar and Star Huntley see what a bad idea that is. This loss is on Huntley and the coaching staff. It seemed like every pass he threw, he was trying to hit someone in the end zone. I mean, seriously, how hard do you need to throw the ball to someone five yards in front of you? Uh, in my opinion, Greg and Wink need to be gone. Greg, for more obvious reasons than Wink. However, the Ravens also need to fire Wink. He is becoming one of the more predictable defensive coordinators in the league. He always blitzes in big-time moments instead of dropping back as many players in the coverage as possible, uh, which is how the Steelers got the fourth down conversion. Bears game is another example. My guy came with some receipts today. Uh, John gets one more year if he fires Greg Roman ASAP. So my question is, <laughs> who would you want for a new Offense and defensive coordinator. Oh, anybody that was not hired by Mr. Hubble. Um, I, I just don't want it to be somebody that lets Harbaugh be comfortable. Uh, because if, if Hobbs is comfortable, then it, it might be that same old stuff. We we want it to be to again philosophy change, man. Philosophy change. We want it to be to where John Harbaugh obviously ain't going nowhere this year. Um, but again, neither are the coordinators. But with, with your question, the hypothetical one, if they were to bring some people in to be offense and defensive coordinator, I would uh, I would take Brian Flores as a defensive coordinator. Um, and as far as the offensive coordinator, uh, there's T. Martin. I, I wouldn't mind T. Martin getting a shot because he's only been here for a year. And I'm, he wasn't Greg Roman's hire. I'm not sure if he was Harbaugh's or EDC in the front office higher. It was one of the two. I'm leaning more towards the front office, I believe, but I'm not 100% sure. I got to look it up. 
Um, but anyway, the fact that he's like he's new in the building and he has some experience being an offensive coordinator, not an NFL, but that's the good thing that he doesn't have the experience in the NFL. So this could be brand new stuff. This would be fresh concepts, fresh schemes, fresh all of that. Shout out to Fresh Market. And I, I, it would just not be some of the same old, same old. So T. Martin would be my vote and Brian Flores uh, for defensive coordinator. Now, in a realistic world, um, I wouldn't expect Ravens to do either one. Uh, if, if it came to that, I think for defensive coordinator, they would probably promote somebody from within. I think Drew, I want to say Drew Wilkins is a linebacker's coach. Oh, I forget his name. My fault. My apologies. Uh, but they'll probably promote from within for both. Um, I think they will go James Urban for offensive coordinator and uh, Drew for linebacker coach for defensive coordinator. He said, Huntley flashes of greatness were only from teams having zero tape on him and not showing or not knowing who the game plan for. The Steelers did know who to plan for and look what happened. And one more thing for everybody wondering why Greg Roman isn't being interviewed anywhere for a head coaching job is because of us, the fans. We are so vocal about how much we hate him. No one wants to hire him. So here's the plan. Everybody needs to not complain next year and say he's the best OC in the league so he can get hired and be gone for good. Um, you know, if I know fans got a voice. I don't think their voice is that powerful, though. Uh, but hey, you never know. But I don't think G GMs are looking around. You never know because social media is it is powerful and it can be used for good and for bad. Um, but I think I just think a lot of GMs and stuff they like mm, Greg Roman. I don't know about that one, boss. I don't know, and it's crazy. He he never had a head coaching job before. He never had a head coaching job before. Had that crazy offense in uh with the 49ers. Uh had a decent offense with the Bills, and then he did everything he did for the Ravens, but no head coaching job, man. Why? And the last question on this episode came from my guy Enonic. He said, Has the window closed? Uh-oh. Uh good evening. Hope all is well with Mrs. Engraven, Carter, Pookie, and yourself. Appreciate you, Enonic. Uh first off, I just wanted to say shout out to you. And the fam, for all you do to keep this channel going. After the pandemic shift to working from home, my day is long, but it does eventually end. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad it does end for you. He said, however, your days never seem to end. <laughs> no, they, 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 they do. They do. I know a lot of times um, it doesn't look like it. Because I know y'all been seeing a video. Y'all see videos just randomly pop up uh, every day. Um, but yeah, the, it, it, it does end. Um, and there are times when I'm like, nope, not we, nope, mm -mm. I'm vibing right now, I'm chilling, I'm relaxing, so, but I, I do appreciate it though, man. He said, I, I noticed the vids from the yard, from the park, the car, where it started, the hotel room, vacations, the bike rides, uh, dog walks, etc. I am by no means well versed in what YouTube requires, but I know all of that takes time, not just filming, but editing, production, uploading, etc., Bro, please take some time off. Oh, trust me, we do. We take a lot of time off. I appreciate your concern, and trust me, I understand it because I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, be somebody that doesn't practice what they preach. Because I say the same thing, like in whatever you do, whatever your profession is, whatever your secular work is, you have to take time off. You gotta take breaks. You gotta relax. And yes, we do plenty of relaxing. Uh, we're very busy even outside of all this YouTube stuff, too, and a lot of other stuff. But, um, no, vi vacations are a must. Um, but it's a little different uh, because when you, like, in this YouTube business, whatever, since it's it's just me, that's it, it's, it's, it's me. Um, it's this is a solo channel. All the editing, there ain't really no fancy editing, nothing like that, but all that is me. Um, so, there, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of work that does get put into it. Um, but And that's why I appreciate y'all so much because y'all support it. Uh, so you may hear me say that I appreciate it a lot, and that's because I really, really do. Because like you mentioned, it is a lot of work that goes into it. And people, when they see the videos and stuff... They don't even see half of what goes into it, especially when it's edited. They don't see all the time that got to go through the emails and all the time that you got to go through uh, just editing and uploading and just 
it's a process. It, it is certainly a process. But I, and then you got to make the thumbnails. You got to put it. You got it's, it's a lot of little stuff that people just don't see, man. Um, but it is what it is. But much love to you, my guy. He said, now for my questions. With the success of the Bengals, Bills, Chiefs, and Pats, along with their young QBs, proper coaching, <laughs> play calling, and the ravages of C-19, I wonder, has the Ravens' window for success closed? I ask this because while I see everyone getting better, the Ravens just seem to come up with more and more ways to lose. Uh, poor decisions, not putting players in their proper positions, bad play calling, analytics, hardball's doghouse, etc. When do you think winning became... Uh, when do you think winning will become a top priority at one winning drive. Keep up the great work. Stay safe. And take some time off. Mm. Um, I don't think their window is closing. I, I don't. Um, and I think if they had a philosophy change. Then that window would be broken wide open. And they could take the lock off of it. And they, they could just leave that thing open all the time. Um, as long as they have Lamar Jackson. I feel like their window will never be closed. We saw this year what happened when he was out. That window shut. It was, they was holding on. They were like, oh, come on, we got to hold this thing. But it shut. Uh, as long as they got Lamar, though, their window won't be closed. Now, um, one big thing is when Lamar's not out there. Uh, and even when he is out there, co coaching is big. Uh, that's why I really feel everything that you mentioned. Uh, the decision making, the, the, the bad play calling, the situational play calling. So much stuff from so many people has to improve. And that's from Lamar, too. That's from different players. Uh, Hollywood got to get more consistent as far as catching. Um, and he, I mean, I know he was missing Lamar like crazy. Because with Lamar, his numbers were going up, even with the drops. But then without Lamar, it went way, like, way down. He should have been hit a 1,000 yards a long time ago. But it went way down. Um, so there's that connection. Um, and, and there's a lot of other guys too But that, those are just the first two that popped in my head uh, So it's, it's so much stuff That goes into the success Of a football team And I, I don't feel like Ravens are maximizing Their uh, opportunities for success But at the same time I don't feel like their window is closing Now if the Ravens still continue to have the same philosophy That they've had The window won't be closed But it's, it's, they're just going to be looking through it and that's it. They ain't going to be jumping through it. They just going to be looking through it. And they're going to continue looking at everybody else, have all this success. While they do have their regular season success and whatnot, but I just feel like their deficiencies overall is going to continue to hold them back. And they've had rosters. They've had teams that can get it done, but they still haven't got it done. So stuff has got to give adjustments got to be better accountability got to be better execution got to be better situational coaching and situational play calling has got to be better so much stuff has got to be better but the window by no means it's not closing at all but they they're gonna continue to look through the window when it comes to playoffs and it comes to super bowls and stuff if they keep up the same routine Shout out to Graven.